Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at a cubic equation with double roots. So the equation ax cubed plus x squared minus x plus 2 equals 0 has a double root, which means that, you know, this is a cubic equation. It has three roots, real and complex. And we're just saying that x1 equals x2, and they're different from x3. All right, so that's what we're talking about. In order for this equation to have a double root, what is the value of a? Okay. Now, I'm going to be presenting two approaches here. The first method. Now, if x equals r is the double root, then from here we can say two things f of r needs to be 0, and by, the, by f I mean I'm just setting this whole thing equal to f of x, f of r is equal to 0, and we also get f prime of r is equal to 0. Yes, we're going to be using calculus, because if we have a double root, that is going to be a root of the original polynomial as well as the first derivative. And you can easily check that uh, by writing it in terms of uh, its roots. Okay. So let's go ahead and, um, you know, just take this expression, f of x, x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 2, and differentiate it. If you differentiate f, you get 3ax squared minus 2x minus 1. Now, we're saying that r is going to be a root of both of these polynomials since it's a double root. So let's go ahead and replace r with both of these equations. So the first one gives us a r cubed minus r squared minus r plus 2 equals 0. So that's my first equation. And I can kind of simplify this a little bit, maybe isolate by the r, r cubed and so on and so forth. But let's go ahead and write the second one as well. So that's kind of going to tell us what to do. The second equation, if I replace x with r using this idea here, f prime of r needs to be 0. Then I get 3ar squared minus 2r minus 1 equals 0. Now looking at this system of equations, we have two variables and two equations. So hopefully we're going to be able to solve this equation. And this is the first method. In the second method, I'm going to be using a very interesting idea. Hopefully um, you'll like that because that's something that we don't really talk much about. Okay, so what, what am I supposed to do here? Uh, from the first equation, I would like to isolate a r cubed. So let's go ahead and do that. And I can write this as r squared plus r minus 2. And then from the second equation, I want to isolate 3a r squared, and that can be written as 2r plus 1. Now here's what I'd like to do. I want to use, I want to get rid of a or r obviously, but getting rid of r is really difficult, maybe impossible, but I can get rid of a easily by using elimination. Uh, so let's go ahead and multiply our first equation by 3, right? And let's multiply the second equation by r. You could multiply by negative r and add, but I'm going to set them equal to each other. So on the left-hand side, I should be getting 3ar cubed equals 3r squared plus 3r minus 6. And on the uh, second equation, I'm also getting 3ar cubed, so I can basically set it equal to that, 2r squared plus r. So if you distribute this, uh, you're going to get the same thing from the left-hand side. So if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. That's what I'm talking about. So this gives me a nice equation, uh, very nice, actually. If you put everything on the same side, you're going to get the following equation. And this equation is very easy to solve. You can use the quadratic formula or completing the square. Obviously, it's not factorable into rationals, but whatever you do, you're going to get r equals negative 1 plus root 7, and r equals negative 1 minus root 7. Very easy to solve. Uh, we could also use the what's known as uh, Poisson low method. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that later. Okay. So, these are the r values, though. I don't need r. I need the a values, right? I'm supposed to find a. But I can find it because we have an equation that relates a and r. So why don't we just go ahead and use that one? The second equation gave me 3ar squared equals 2r plus 1. From here, if I isolate a, I get 2r plus 1 divided by 3r squared. 
So I was able to write A in terms of R, and I know the values of R, so I can just plug it in and find the values. Let me just find one, and then I'll tell you the other one is going to be very similar. So we're going to replace, um, let's write the first R value as root 7 minus 1, plus 1 divided by 3 times root 7 minus 1 squared. This is going to give us the first A value, and then the second A value is going to be very similar. I'll tell you what it is. Sim let's simplify this. Uh, this gives me 2 root 7 minus 1. The bottom is going to give me 8 minus 2 root 7. And obviously, we do need to rationalize denominators. Let's go ahead and multiply by 8 plus 2 root 7, and both the top and the bottom. From here, we get something nicer. Now, when you uh, distribute the top, you're going to get something. 2 root 7 times 8 is going to be 16 root 7. And then if you multiply 2 root 7 by 2 root 7, that's going to be 4 times 7, which is 28, minus 8 minus 2 root 7. Now we can simplify this later, later on. And here, these two numbers, expressions are conjugate. So if you multiply them, you get the difference of two squares, which is 64 minus uh, 2, root two, 2 root 7 squared, which is 28. So 64 minus 28, that's what you get. And 64 minus 28, can I just say that it's 36? Now, let's simplify the numerator. The numerator gives me 14 root 7. Should I write the integer first? Maybe. I don't know. 20 plus 14 root 7. This is probably more standard. And then this is divided by 3 times 36, which is 108. But this can be simplified. And I can write it as 10 plus 7 root 7 divided by 54. So this is my first A value. Let's call it A1. And if you use the other value, which is negative 1 minus root 7, plug it in, go through the, uh, all the steps, eventually you're going to be getting the second A value as 10 minus 7 root 7 over 54. That's very similar. That's why I don't think we should do it. You can do it on your own if you want. Okay, great. Let's take a look at the second method. So we got the A values from the first method, and we should be getting the exact same values. Let's see how the second method works. The second method is kind of nice because I'm going to talk about the discriminant of a cubic equation. Have you heard about that before? Well, that's kind of like an interesting topic. We don't really do much about it. It's not mentioned much because it's quite complicated. As you know, the cubic formula is pretty complicated. Of course, the discriminant is also complicated. I'm not going to get into the details why this is the discriminant, but I'm just going to give it to you for free. The discriminant of this cubic equation, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, can be written as b squared c squared minus 4a c cubed minus 4b cubed d minus 27 a squared d squared plus 18 a b CD. Obviously, this is a mouthful, right? That's a very long expression. What would you expect, right? I mean, what happens if uh, A is equal to 0? We should be getting a quadratic, right? Okay, anyways, you can take a look at it. But this is the discriminant. But discriminant, interestingly, can also be written in a different way in terms of the roots of the cubic equation. So we can also write it as A to the fourth power multiplied by x1 minus x2 quantity squared multiply by x1 minus x3 quantity squared, multiply by x2 minus x3 quantity squared. So the, in, uh, the difference, uh, the order in which you take these differences don't matter because we're squaring everything, and obviously we do have some type of symmetry here. So that's the discriminant, and this, the second formula, is actually really, really cool because it tells you what happens when we have a double root. So in other words, if x1 is equal to x2, what happens? you get a zero, and discriminant becomes zero. So x1 equals x2 in a cubic equation basically implies that the discriminant is zero. Awesome. So, and it's kind of similar for quadratic equations too, right? You wouldn't be surprised. So if you just go ahead and plug everything uh, into, you know, the A, B, C, D stuff, you will be getting something like this. You would get 1 plus 4A plus 8 minus 108 a squared plus 36a is equal to 0. I did the work for you, so you don't have to worry about it. And then from here, you would be getting 108a squared minus 40a minus 9 is equal to 0. This is kind of nice because we're using the discriminant for the cubic, which is kind of very rare. 
and also getting the a values directly. And if you solve this quadratic equation by any means, you're going to be getting the following solutions. And this is going to be the end of the second method. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.